Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the China penny stocks. Okay, I, I mentioned that in the last video so I thought I'd throw this up for you real quick. I'm just going to go over these ones quickly without a lot of analysis. I want to welcome you to our chat. Um, it, 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 please come and check it out. If you if you log in to welcome, I will connect you to the uh, premium channels and you can check it out for a free trial. And uh, yeah, we'd love to see you in the chat. And so if we check out uh, ticker symbol CNET here, it closed up nearly 7%. Um, if you look over here, it, it, it came down and it, it's bouncing off of the middle Bollinger Band and the 100-day simple moving average at 269. It needs to hold those levels. 269 is the big support level. And today, um, there was a bullish Hermie Cross reversal pattern. Okay, that, that was uh, confirmed today. Um, or or uh, Yeah, uh, let's see. That, that, that pattern was confirmed today. It did form right here. Okay, La last week it formed on, um, what, what is it? It formed on Monday. And then um, with, with Friday's candle, and then you have the doji inside of Friday's candle. Today's white candle confirmed that pattern. I, I wanted to show you this chart, and it is a little bit difficult to read those, uh, take a look at those candles but the reason I want to show you is you can see the past run over here so you can see the potential the upside potential check out the recent volume back here in April so it looks like there was some loading going on what you want to see is a break above this 350 resistance zone if it can get above that level it could really get moving um, you know right now it could make a run if it stays above that middle Bollinger Band back up to 350 and then if it fails to break that would be a temporary top has to get above this closing price here on the 17th or 18th of April if it fails to break that that signal you know temporary top but if it broke out above, a close above, that would signal more upside. Four will be a big level to break as well. So keep an eye on that one. Take a look at CCCL. Okay, it closed up 5%. Now these are all uh, thinly traded stocks. And, and you know, that has been what's going on right now is they have light volume and they start to percolate and then boom, the volume comes in and they run. At least that's what's been happening recently with the small caps. And so we're keeping an eye on other stocks that, that have similar setups. And right now I just want to show you the potential uh, 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 penny stock uh, China plays and, and what you have right here is a little volume spike right and then you have a close just above that 50-day simple moving average or right at that level 163 that's the green line notice the last close above that level is back here in February if you can get above that level and then you have the 200 and 300-day uh, simple moving averages here at 171 you could get a run up to that 100-day simple moving average at 187 if it gets above that 187 level that 100-day simple moving average that's when it could really get moving if you look back here in December and January you know there was some good volume and it had a nice run so keep an eye on this one you know it did run all the way up to 430 from down here below two dollars on that previous run so so you know keep an eye on it take a look at chnr now super low volume only 39,000 shares traded today uh, you have to be careful with thinly traded stocks you can buy them but then they'll be difficult to sell and, and so you want to you want to uh, you know the, the thing to do is jump in when the volume uh, picks up like over here in january you could see the big volume spikes came in right here and then it made that nice run you know and that was the time to trade this the, the these stocks have short windows of opportunity and you have to capitalize on it when it happens and then don't get caught holding the bag or else you could get stuck in this kind of situation a huge drop and and, and so right now it closed above that 50-day simple moving average at 212 I mean it was able to close above it on 39,000 shares so there's not a lot of selling pressure right now and uh, it just needs more buyers and so when, when you get a thinly traded stock like this um, and the buyers start coming in and nobody's selling that's how they get the push going and and so it needs to get above the 200, 300, 300 day simple moving averages. If it can get above 229, once again, it's that 100 day simple moving average at 242. Get above that level and they can get running. Look how similar these chart setups are. Okay, so so the the, the they all have uh, very similar setups, and, and so the algorithms, you know, if, if they start running them, they'll take over and they'll they'll go down down the line. Some many times that's how it works, and they'll start pushing them. So you want to have these on the radar to see if they if they get breaking above resistance. Take a look at CCIH closed up uh, to uh, you know closed up here fractionally, but it had the two hundred forty thousand uh, shares traded. You know, I thought this one looked interesting uh, to keep an eye on because you've got the tight Bollinger bands here and. And then you've got, uh, um, you know, they're getting tight. And then uh, you have the, the, look how the moving averages have all converged here. It's just all super tight. You know, this, this uh, look how all these moving averages are between 124 and uh, 128. You know, and you, you do have the 100-day simple moving average up here at 154. But 128 is the top moving average there, the 300-day simple moving average. And it closed above today. And so if it could stay above that level, look for a run up to that 100-day simple moving average. Notice how it's been the big resistance level. If it breaks above that, 
then it could really get moving. You know, this had the uh, volume spikes previously in April, so it looks like you know there's some loading going on for the for the next run possibly. And then you could see back here in, in December and January how it took off running. Notice how they all took off running at the same time. That's what I'm talking about. Is the algos? You know, they all happen at the same time. That's why we go down the line. That's why we trade the the, the sectors. You know, we trade what's hot, and then uh, you know, and then when when it cools off, then we move on to the next thing. And so right now, uh, t take a look at CNIT has a hundred thousand shares traded. Um, you know, th this this one's bouncing off of the two hundred day simple moving average. It needs to hold one fifty nine. Um, you know, it, it needs to get above the middle Bollinger Band at one seventy three. If you see it break above one seventy three, that'll signal it's heating up, and then it could run up to that fifty and hundred day simple moving averages. If it breaks above two dollars, that's where it'll be the real clue that it's ready to. Uh, you know, that, that that it's making a bullish move. It has to have the volume spike. So keep an on it for a volume spike and a push through resistance. Take a look at HGSH. Okay, so this is another one to look at. You know, once again, low volume. It is, you know, breaking above 50 on RSI. You can see all the indicators are heating up. Um, it, it has that super tight channel going on. Um, it needs to break above the top of the channel. As you can see, they, they've got this channel in sideways for days right now. And uh, it hit the top of the channel and pulled back. So you can see it's been, you know, for multiple months, it's in the sideways channel. And that 145 level is the top of the channel that's currently lined up with the 100-day simple moving average. If it can bust above that level, that's going to be really bullish. And then what you're looking for is that 300-day simple moving average at 149. If this thing gets above 149, it could really get moving. Look, look, look at the move it made back in January. You know, it ran all the way up to 450. It, it, but, but look how it happened. You know what I mean? It was a giant volume spike, and then boom! If you if you held overnight, you were brutalized. So these kind of runners, that they're, they're day trades. You know, you have to jump in and then jump out. Once you see this like upper wick start forming, you know you want to get to the sidelines. You don't want to be holding these these China stocks when they form long upper wicks. That's signal of dilution. You know, these are day trading vehicles when they pop off. It's like a, a like I said in the last video it's like a pop-up shop you know when, when the atm like gets turned on bing now they're running you jump in lock in the gains and get out and hope you made it out alive with with more money than you started with and, and, and so you can do that by playing the charts and that that makes it safe if you follow the charts get in and then get out before they break down then you should be okay but but if you hold too long or you get a bad entry point that's where you can get burned and if you look here the, the, this uh, uh, cccr closed up fractionally on 80,000 shares so keep an eye on this one for a break above the 50 day simple moving average at 122 you know it had that volume spike yesterday that caught my eye. Notice that the, the 500,000 shares traded yesterday and they pulled it back. This has a little more money flow than the other stocks. And I like the big, you know, this had bigger volume down here. So this is more liquid than some of the other ones. So, uh, you know, even though it only had 80,000 shares, you know, it, it, it can get it, it can get some volume going. So keep an eye on it. If it gets above 122 and the volume starts coming in, it could run up to that 100-day simple moving average at 152. And then finally, CGA, another one to keep an eye on. Closed up uh, fractionally today on 60,000 shares. Notice how RSI is at 52. It's above that 50 level for the first time since uh, back here in February. And, and so you can see the trading's gotten super tight here. The Bollinger Bands are very tight. You have the upper Bollinger Band at 130 and the lower Bollinger Band at 122. Okay, this is the lower Bollinger Band, the solid purple line. And the upper Bollinger Bands converged with the, the 50... Uh, 200 and 300 day simple moving averages and the upper Bollinger Band. So basically, if it can break above 130, then you have the 100 day simple moving average at 134 on deck and, and get above that, and that's when it could really get moving. When you get tight Bollinger Bands like this, and once again a really tight channel, it's a signal that that you know uh, um, you know the charts wound tight and that 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 a move could be coming at any time. You know, it's been channeling sideways, super tight on really low volume, and, and, and so what you look for is for a volume spike. And, and then a, a push through resistance. You know, this was a head fake. You know, it, it, it did get the volume spike and it got above that 50 day simple moving average and pulled back. Probably a lot of people got sucked in on this candle. You know, they probably got sucked in over here too. That, that's why you got to just trade these things. You can see over here to get a multi day run back here in uh, January. But, but if they can get above that uh, 100 day simple moving average and start running, that's going to be your signal that it is uh, in play. So keep an eye on CGA. All right, thanks for viewing this video. Come check out the chat. I'll post the link below the video. Thank you.